When we look out into the cosmos, most of the stars we see are really only the most extreme ones. Giant stars, most of which are more massive and more luminous than our Sun. The stars in the constellation of Cassiopeia are no different. The classical W form makes the shape of a vain queen, Cassiopeia, mother of Andromeda, from Greek mythology. At magnitude 2.2, Alpha Cassiopeiae, or Shadar, is generally the brightest star in Cassiopeia, though it is occasionally outshone by the variable Gamma Cassiopeiae, which has reached magnitude plus 1.6. A rich section of the Milky Way runs through Cassiopeia, containing a number of open clusters, young luminous galactic disk stars and nebulae, but these are not the only ones. The faint orange dwarf, HR8832, lies in between Cassiopeia's larger stars, and is one of as many as 14 star systems within the Cassiopeia constellation that are thought to host exoplanets. Hi everyone, Vega here. And in today's video we continue our constellation series and focus on the vain queen, Cassiopeia. So let's get to it. In Arabic it was thought that Cassiopeia stars formed a tinted hand, and indeed covering 1.45% of the sky, Cassiopeia ranks 25th of the 88 constellations in area. High in the northern skies it's circumpolar, and that means it never sets in the night sky in the northern hemisphere to viewers at the British Isles, Canada and the northern United States. The five brightest stars of Cassiopeia, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta and Epsilon, form the characteristic W-shaped asterism, one of the most recognised asterisms in the night sky. All five are prominent naked eye stars. Alpha Cassiopeiae, also known as Shadar, is detectable to most observers across the globe and reaches as far south as Perth, Australia or Santiago, Chile. Indeed, only Antarctica and the southern reaches of Patagonia can generally not see the star. An orange-red giant star, it's notably cooler than the Sun, and Shadar extends out to 0.2 astronomical units, which is roughly half the mercurial orbit. The estimated distance is around 228 light-years. Like all giant stars, Alpha Cassiopeiae rotates slowly with an approximate velocity of 6.7 km a second. And this speed takes the star approximately 102 days to make one complete revolution on its axis. Having spent much of its time as a blue-white B-type main sequence star, Alpha Cassiopeia is thought to be around 100 to 200 million years old. It's interesting to look at Cassiopeia, but if we were in the Alpha Centauri system, it might become even more interesting. That's because we would actually be part of it. Here we see the Sun as observed from Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system. Visible in Cassiopeia as a yellow-white 0.5 magnitude star, at least if from this short distance we would be far brighter and outshine any of the other stars in the constellation. From Alpha Centauri the famous W of Cassiopeia would be unchanged because its stars are much further away than Alpha Centauri, but the Sun would appear as an addition to the leftmost end, closest to Epsilon Cassiopeiae, and create a zigzag-like pattern. Beta Cassiopeiae, or CAF as it's also known, is an F-class giant star similar in many ways to Procyon. A white-hued magnitude 2.3, it lies 55 light-years from Earth. More than three times the radius and 28 times brighter than the Sun, it's around 1.2 billion years old, and it's used all its core hydrogen and begun expanding and cooling off the main sequence. Cath is a fast-rotating star, and the star itself has an oval shape with an equatorial bulge 24% larger than around its poles. We know of other stars like this and have talked about them before on this channel, and the local giant of Vega certainly falls into this category of strange egg-shaped stars. Additionally, Cath is a variable star of the Delta Scuti type, and the second brightest of such stars in the sky after Altair. This type of variable includes subgiants, or main sequence stars of spectral classes just F5 to A0, which makes it quite an exclusive group to belong to. Some other interesting sites in Cassiopeia certainly would include the Bubble Nebula. A large emission nebula near the border with Cepheus, it lies at an estimated distance of 7,000 to 11,000 light years. The nebula can only be seen with a telescope, and it appears as a large, very faint shell around the central star. This central star is a hot, massive blue O type star with a surface temperature of as much as 37,000 Kelvin. It's believed to be around 2 million years old, and amazingly, single handedly, it's produced this beautiful bubble shaped nebula with nothing more than its stellar wind, beginning around 40,000 years ago. The sheer power of these stars is incredible, isn't it? Rutschbar, also known as Delta Cassiopeiae, is 99 light years from Earth. 
a former A-class main sequence star similar to Sirius, it's recently left the main sequence. Sirius and Ruchpar though at one point of time would have been very similar. But Ruchpar now has left the main sequence and it, so it managed to shine so brightly despite being over 10 times further away from Sirius. It's thought to have a circumstellar debris disk with an orbital radius of 88 astronomical units and that's 88 times the distance of the Earth from the Sun. For comparison, the region of the remote Kuiper belt in the solar system only extends out to around a maximum of 50 astronomical units. Any future travellers to Cassiopeia might well want to stop off along the way. The small K-class dwarf we mentioned at the beginning, HR8832, is much smaller and much less luminous than our Sun, but it's an estimated 21.25 light years distance. The star is close to the limit of which can be seen with the unaided eye, but it's interesting because it has a system of as many as six exoplanets. The innermost planet is a rocky super-Earth based on size, around 1.6 times that of Earth but it's also thought to contain another super-Earth, a Neptunian-like world, a Jovian one, and even more interesting perhaps, a mini-Saturn, which orbits the star in just over three years. The planets were deduced using the radial velocity method in 2015. In this graphic, we see an imagined view from this mini-Saturn world, and now a human-developed outpost, let's say some two to three hundred years in the future from now. As we look towards the final destination of our travellers, Cassiopeia and its larger stars, we now see the familiar W shape. Future observations have already been planned to learn more about this newly discovered system, but it's certainly one of the most interesting in our local neighbourhood. Gamma Cassiopeia is a type of variable star with a variable disk of material that's flung off by the high rotation rate of the star. A binary star is thought to have a companion very similar to the Sun, and the two are thought to orbit each other every 204 days, but no direct evidence of this companion has actually yet been found. This has led to speculation that it might actually just be a white dwarf, or indeed a degenerate star. It's around 550 light years from Earth. The last of the truly bright stars in Cassiopeia, at least from the solar system's perspective, is Epsilon Cassiopeiae. At around 420 light years from Earth, it's a hot blue white B class star with a surface temperature of 15,000 Kelvin. 6.5 times as massive and 4.2 times as wide as the Sun, it belongs to a class of stars known as BE stars that rapidly spin and throw off a ring or shell of matter. There are many constellations in the sky but few as recognisable as the Vane Queen. For centuries and millennia we have looked up into our skies and seen the familiar W shape sparkling brightly in our night sky. One day we may choose to visit some of these stars on our way towards the galactic centre, or perhaps will stop off on the way to one of the 14 planetary systems Cassiopeia is thought to harbour. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description below. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments and it could be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.